doesn't matter who wins in the regular season. This, this is when it counts. We worked all year for this. We're going to come in here and play our game. It doesn't get any better than this. We win this game today. We, we won it Monday through Friday. We're a family and we can overcome any adversity and look where we are now. It was insane. Greatest time of my life. We grinded all summer and this, this is the result. It's the best feeling ever. It's never over until it's over. And if you keep on working, you keep on doing your job, it's just going to happen your way, man. We wanted to come out here and make a statement. I think we did. Yeah. Everyone just chipped in, did their part, and this is what happened. We played harder, dug deep, and came out with a victory. It's just amazing, you know? Every single time, no matter how many times you win, it's, it's awesome. The sights and sounds of the Long Island Championships like only the great cameraman Dave can produce and we thank him for that. Hi everyone and welcome to another championship edition of the News 12 Sports Rush. I'm Kevin Marr. The high school football season culminating in four championship games. We have your highlights. We've got some champs joining us in the studio on the show and I have Sports Rush producer Andrew Rappaport by my side like he's been since week one of this season. So we get two championship games and we get two championships or four championship games, two championships <laughs> in Nassau County, two of them in Suffolk County. I thought that's what happened. You? Yeah, so it, in Suffolk, when the games were at Stony Brook, the two Nassau teams won, and when the games were in Nassau, the two Suffolk teams won. Perfect. Um, yeah, listen, you, you had an idea that a couple of games were going to be blowouts, and they were. I didn't know who was going to win the Lindley Garden City game. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was going to be a great defensive battle, and it was. I thought the Plain Edge Sable game would be a little closer because Sable has that great passing attack. It that Plain Edge, admittedly, yeah, had never seen before. But it, but it wasn't. And I thought the Floyd Freeport game would be a little closer, and it was until it wasn't. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of it went how it, we expected, and then there were some surprises. But, hey, that's the Long Island Championships. That's why it's awesome. And some teams absolutely piled on the points <laughs> sure in these did. championship games. That was a bit shocking for me. Let's show you the closest game of the bunch. Lindenhurst and Garden City for the Class 2 championship. Here we go. This game over at Hofstra. Two great defenses. So it was scoreless after one, and then defense on display in the second. Pierce Archer picks off the pass for GC. Going to return it to the 37-yard line in Garden City's in business. And then nine plays later, the old reliable Ford, Ford Carney on a fourth and goal. Look at that. Tuck it inside the pylon at 7-0 Trojans. But you need more than one touchdown to beat Lindenhurst in the third quarter. Luke Schmidt to Carney and watch Ford kick it in first gear. And he's going to kick it in the second gear. And he's going to kick it in the third gear. And that, oh, oh I think he's going to kick it into overdrive. Very nice 45 yards before being pushed out of bounds of the 25 and on the very next play Archer straight up the gut for a 25 yard score Garden City in control 13 nothing ref. Yeah, Garden City up 13 nothing. We were sitting up in the press box. We're like, wow, are they going to get shut out again? No, no. Lindenhurst got shut out last year. Jaden Barber says no, no, Mr. Rappaport. We're not getting shut out. He makes it 13 seven. So we go to the fourth and the Trojans trying a quick punt. But Sukami Agolie blocks it, and the Dogs take over at the 38-yard line. And that was the momentum changer of the game, no question about it. You hear that all the time in big games. Special teams can make a difference. Three plays later, Barber, who already scored the first touchdown, busts 55 yards to the house, and Lindy led it 14-13. Garden City had one final chance. Yeah, Jack Winnie had a huge block to spring in there. And the last chance, Garden City opened up the bag of tricks, but it's picked off by Matt Newman, and that sealed it. And Lindenhurst wins its second Long Island Championship in dramatic fashion, 14-13 the final. We have a lot of guys who've been in a lot of these big games, and we know that it's never over until it's over. And if you keep on working, you keep on doing your job, it's just going to happen your way, man. And they're a hell of a team, but I mean, we worked way too hard to let this slip through our fingers. We knew right as soon as we stepped on this field that we were the better team, you know? So when we were down 13 nothing, we, we just said, we were like, you know, something's not right. Let's let's pick it up, you know? And that's what we did. I never doubted one second that we would lose. I never doubted one second because I, I believe our team. I know we have playmakers. I know that we make plays when we need to. And that's exactly what we did. Here's what I love about Lindenhurst. 
they don't have one superstar on their team. Mm -mm. A lot of these other Long Island champs have players with big, gaudy yep. stats. We, we know who the headliners and, are. And, and yep. that's fine if, if that's how your team is built. But these guys are just a bunch of hard workers. Look, we, we, we talk to offensive linemen and, you know, linebackers on that team. Sometimes you quarterbacks, running backs, but those are the stars of this team. And it was great to see. And they mentioned they had no doubt they were going to win. Okay. That's a big statement to make against Garden City, which you could argue sets the tone for high school football on Long Island. Yeah, I mean, Garden City is arguably the team of the decade. I heard a stat yesterday. I think they have like 10 losses this, this decade or That's something crazy. like that. And when you're down 13 nothing to a Garden City defense. And you still believe. Yeah, things are not looking good for Lindenhurst. But, yeah, they believed and they got it done. They are the top dogs. Congratulations <laughs> to Lindenhurst. And we mentioned teams with superstars. Safe to say, plain edge quarterback Dan Villari fits that bill. Michigan, UMass. Wisconsin have called, so he decommitted from Fordham. He's wide open, he said, in his recruiting process. No decision yet. And here's what he did to save Hill in the Class 3 Long Island Championship. Plain Edge scored on its very first possession. 76-yard drive cap by Valari just carrying the defense over the goal line. That's six foot three, 215 pounds a man right there. Carried his team all season, carried the defense there. And he was hurt in last year's Long Island Championship game. Looking good this time. He finds Donovan Pepe for a 44-yard score. It was 14-0. Plain edge just getting started. The Red Devils never saw a passing attack like Sabills. They said it, right, Rep? Yeah, they but did. Anthony Morello got the sack right there. That's some great work during the week to get ready for Sayville. Meanwhile, no struggle for Plain Edge. Oh, my goodness, Valari. 306 yards rushing in this game. Six touchdowns, four on the ground. Those are crazy numbers in a championship game. Sayville was down 28 points. They need a massive rally. It's Jack Cheshire hitting Nathan Casbury, and that's Cheshire's Long Island record, 43rd and final touchdown pass of the season. But they could not stop the Red Devils in the third. Dion Quinlan joins the scoring fun. First of his two scores, he had 144 yards, and this one, all plain edge, wins its first Long Island championship, 56 to 20. Everyone's been waiting for this for this moment. You know, it's just it's it's insane. But um, you know, it's it's that motivation, that hard work all summer, staying late while everyone's out, sta staying in the weight room, so training every morning, waking up early while everyone's sleeping. That's where you get this from. And Dan Villari will join us in the studio later on in the show. Crazy offensive numbers. Plain Edge had 454 yards rushing and 519 of total offense <laughs> in a championship yeah, game the, when the opposing team had a week to get ready. Yeah, they uh, they know how to win, and they put it all together at the right time. Now listen, one thing about Sable, they're going to learn from this. Yep. They'll be back. They return a ton of talent including their quarterback, Jack Cheshire. And when you have a quarterback who could throw like that, you can only learn from this and get better for next year. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say they're the early favorites for next season. Already, huh? And so Think so? County, yeah, why not? Just because of the quarterback. Listen, you have a quarterback, a record-setting quarterback who's coming back, who's only going to be better because he's bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. And we have seen that at Sayville before. Yes, we They've have. They've had a lot of good ones. We talk about that system and produced a lot of championships. So, all right, Rap says you're the favorite. Good luck. Go get them, <laughs> Flashes. Uh, you mentioned great quarterbacks. Easy segue into the Class 4 championship game. Good writing. Oh, it was very good. It says it right there. I'm reading it. <laughs> Shoreham Wading River and their stud Xavier R. Line. Let's show you how they dismantled Seaford in the championship. And this was domination from the get-go. First possession. X is in effect. R. Line to Jake Wilson. It's a nine-yarder. Seven-nothing Cats. Less than three minutes later. R. Line with another short pass. This is how they get you. It's the yards after the catch. And Mike Kazasa gets the big block. Takes it 35 yards. 14-0 Cats, and even the Wildcats special teams was special. They swarmed the ball, forced the fumble recovery at the seven-yard line, and they are back in business. Yeah, it was, uh, that again, really stunned Seifert because now you got 14 nothing and it became 21 nothing just like that. And let's just say it, our line is really one of the most talented high school athletes of this decade. State lacrosse championships, if you remember. Everybody knew you stopped him, you beat Shoreham. The dude scored seven goals. He rises up in big games. He was awesome in this one. And he looked like a video game out there. Watch the way he just looks at the field and makes a cut, and then turns on the next move, and mode, and boom, he scores again. By the way, great blocking on that play. We got to point that out. Look at this. Unbelievable. Six total touchdowns for the X-Men. Shoreham has itself another Long Island championship and a massive, massive win.
confidence is the number one. It all starts in the head. You know, you got to believe it's already yours before you get out here. And then you just believe in the guys next to you and everything work, works out. We were just all playing with a purpose. I think everyone was playing for the person next to them. And I think at the end of the day, that's the biggest thing. Is It's, it's a mental game, football. And I think when you have a drive like that, it will really just propel a team. And so that is four championships in six years at Shoreham. And our line said, tough to get up for this game after the emotional win over Mount Sinai in the counties. Uh, really? That's tough to get up for? They, they got up for it. Yeah, holy <laughs> smokes. Wiped the floor with them. My goodness. Yeah, uh, Shoreham, people were talking in the press box, hey, what happens if Shoreham would have played up a conference this year? Y y you never know. I mean, Shoreham, Sayville could have been a good, a good game, too. It's tough because different school sizes, but Shoreham was one of those teams this year. Uh, you know, they, they learned from that Mount Sinai mistake. Yep. Um, the Mount Sinai lost, I'm sorry, and, and they, they figured out how to get it done from there. And, hey, the, the dynasty continues out there. And also, don't forget culture. A lot of those guys on this football team won the state lacrosse championship. Sure. So it breeds itself. Shoreham has always been a lacrosse school before the last, what did we say, six years, four and six years. They were always a, a lacrosse school, but now they're a football school too. Yep, they are a powerhouse. And when we come back, Xavier Arline runs right into our studio with his buddy Dan Valori. They'll join us coming up next on The Rush. Back on the sports rush with a big school Long Island championship rematch. Floyd and Freeport Colonials lost by a point a year ago. And Tommy Verga's like, no, no, no. This is going to be my last game as a quarterback at Floyd. We're going to try and win this thing down to the one-yard line. That's a great run. It led to a game-tying touchdown. But the Red Devils get the lead back 30 seconds into the second quarter. Makai Jinx, who had a great game, makes it 13-6 Freeport. Floyd answers back. How about this? A 25 play drive. It lasted nearly the entire quarter. Here's Berger capped it off with 10 seconds to go before the half. And the Colonials are thinking we got this. It's 14-13 at the break. And I don't know what Coach Sellen said in that Freeport locker room, but it basically said, defense, where are you? Javian Allen rips the ball away from that running back, and he's going to take it to the 19-yard line. And three plays later, it is Jinx cashing in one more time. He had five touchdowns in the game. Yet again, another guy that wrapped piling on touchdowns in the Long Island Championship game. And that would help seal it because it was a second half. Free port shutout. Allen with the interception. And it's back-to-back -back undefeated seasons. And Long Island Championships for the Mighty Red Devils. 42-14 the final. We just grew up together. We all knew each other since we were four or five years old. We played football together since forever. And the bond is just something like some people never get. Feels like heaven. Getting to do this once in life is amazing, but twice, it doesn't get any better than this. So make it 24 straight wins now for the Red Devils. Going to graduate a lot, of, a lot of talent, but at Freeport, they always seem to reload. Yeah, a, a few coaches told me they're going to be excellent again next year, and don't worry about that. But they'll come a little bit closer to the pack, which means good news for every other team in the league. Um, this year, everyone knew the Devils were the favorite. Everybody was playing for second place. And, you know, I love numbers. 499 to 100. That is what Freeport outscored opponents by. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's crazy. Yeah. Great job, guys. All right, like we told you as well, it was Shoreham Wading River and Plain Edge also winning championships thanks to monster games from their quarterbacks. Shoreham's Xavier R. Line was so good, even his linemen were like, that's a dude. It's crazy seeing what he does because I don't see it during the plays, but then I get home and I'm watching the film and I'm like, Jesus, like, it's just incredible what he can do. And he just makes people look silly game in and game out. Yeah, and all those Shoreham linemen, nice enough to share Xavier with us today. He's right here sitting next to me. Also, Plain Edge quarterback Dan Valari rocking the number two. Two Long Island champions and two average Joes here on the set. So this is going to be a fun conversation. But first of all, congratulations to both of you, thank you Long thank Island you. champions. And we should point out, Xavier went to Dan's game, watched yes. him play. You guys know each other. How? Uh, we have the same quarterback trainer, Coach Brady. Figures start off the show with a shout out to him. Uh, <laughs> quarterback coach Brady, James Brady, trains a lot of great quarterbacks over the island, does a great job with the stuff, but we happen to train at the same place uh, with the same guy. So a lot of the same lessons and not even, you know, just on the field stuff, but off the field stuff, leadership comes from him. So we got to pay a lot of respect to him. Well, that's awesome. The guy knows what he's doing, obviously, because you both won championships, both yeah. tore it up in both games. I want to start with uh, Dan over there, first of all. How nice is it to get plain edge over the hump? What does it mean to be a first time Long Island champ? It's, uh, it's an unreal feeling. To be honest, like just uh, being the being the first team to do it, it's uh, extra special to get a get a championship for Coach Shaver. So 
and tell everybody what was the reaction when you got back to school? Because you thought it would yeah. be just get off the bus and there's the trophy and let's go home. Yeah, I, I didn't expect it, but uh, there was a whole bunch of people outside our locker room waiting for us, parents, kids. That's awesome. Took a lot of pictures. Yeah, it was, it was, it was special. Do you guys keep tabs on each other during the season? Like, do you always check on on him? And do you check on, you know, on Dan? Yeah, I, I, I see his uh, I see his highlights on Instagram, and I'm like, bro, this kid is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, always checking to see what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, always. That's why I went to his game. I wanted to see it in real life. And what'd you think when you saw it in real life? Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> he's, 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 I don't I don't like to hype a lot of people up. That's not just who I am, but mm. I wanted to see it in action. He's the real deal. There's do you no hype yourself in my up? mind. No. <laughs> no, I don't hype myself up. <laughs> I got to remain level-headed. It sort of begs the question, what does he do well that you wish you could do? Um, be tall. <laughs> no, no, no. Story of my life, my uh, friend. You can keep wishing for that. It ain't ever gonna happen. Oh, my bad, my bad. Uh, um, he leads great. I mean, that's definitely something that I've, you know, uh, been working on through my my career is my leadership. I mean, I saw it in him, and just his confidence is unreal. You know, when he's out there, you have a sense that you know he's the dude, and he's gonna do what a dude does. So. Yeah. Uh, he really he really showed who he is this past weekend. All right, dude, let me talk to you then because you get hurt in last year's Long Island Championship game, yeah. right? We're going to roll some video of the great plays you made this year. How much motivation was it to win because of that bad ending last year? Yeah, I mean, this is actually X. Oh, there you go, X. <laughs> well, you're looking good. But Dan, let me go back to Dan. How much motivation was there? Yeah, I mean, right, right, when, I, um, right when I came out, the only thing that was in my head was like, man, I got to – we gotta get back to this this game next year, and that's been the motivation ever since. And you said you played Sayville, you wanted Sayville. Yep. Why? Um, we uh, we versed them in a seven on seven at Stony Brook over the summer, and it got a little chippy. And you know they were they were saying they wanted us in pads, and so that's why we wanted them. So well, they, they got, got you in pads. <laughs> And, and, and for you, was did you want Cold Spring Harbor or you guys didn't care who you played? I mean, it was just get that, that chip back. I mean, there was definitely a sense of wanting to play Cold Spring Harbor again. You know, we want revenge, you know, especially around Shoreham. We know a little bit of thing, thing about revenge. But at the end of the day, we want to win a Long Island championship. And whoever, you know, is going to get placed in front of us, we got to handle them just like anyone else. But, yeah, for sure, we definitely want to see them again. We, we talked about it after the game, and, and you just heard from your linemen now. How vital are they to what you do? I say it all the time. Football is the ultimate team game. So my, my good games are their great games, and I'm, you know, I'm blessed to have them. And just, you know, because you could have a team, great team, good athletes, but if the line doesn't protect the quarterback, things can go wrong. So I'm just blessed to have guys that protect me with everything. And I have to ask you the same question because it wouldn't be fair not to give the planet yeah. lineman a yeah. shout-out. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, this sport, you can't put it on one dude. So, you know, my line – They've been through so much adversity. They they were doubted from day one because because of their size, but they uh, they rose above it, and we wouldn't be there without them, definitely not. You know what I like about Dan too. He said, "I can't wait to go to school. <laughs> I can't wait to go to school." <laughs> first. So, what do you think it'll be like? Uh, I don't know. I pr probably uh, get a lot of congrats, congratulations from everyone, and uh, it'll be it'll be a good day. Does it feel different in town? Like the next day, did you wake up and did you go around town and did yeah. it feel different? Yeah, in what way? Just, mm -hmm. We finally did it. You know, we're, we're champions, so it's different, definitely different feeling. You think you can get the big, big trophy to walk around school with? <laughs> I have it at my house. Oh, you right. do? <laughs> well, that answers that. <laughs> <laughs> it's sitting on my kitchen table. Yeah, yeah, I do. I got the lucky straw to take it home. I'm going to have to give but, it back. But it probably won't fit in your locker. And that's why I'm going to keep it in my room. That's why I'm going to keep it in my room. <laughs> we'll talk more about trophies and winning when we come back on The Rush right after this. Welcome back, everyone, as we continue our chat with Shoreham Waiting River quarterback Xavier Arline and Plain Edge quarterback Dan Villari. Plain Edge, first-time Long Island champions. X for your team. It's now a dynasty out there. What's the message to the kids at Plain Edge? How do you keep the train rolling in high school football? Right. I mean, I think it really comes down to leadership. I've been you know, on numerous teams, not even just in high school, but you know, my whole life. Um, great teams and not so good teams. And the main difference that I find in all those teams is the leadership. And it's not, you know, leadership isn't just yelling at guys. You, uh, it's understanding your players. Mm. So, you know, some guys handle things differently. So, you know, if I get into him, he might crash. But if I get into this other guy, he might rise above and play better. So it's all about understanding your guys and just getting the guys around you to buy in. We have some video of both of you guys playing high school lacrosse. What mm. has high school sports, Dan, meant for you? Uh, I mean, 
it's it's meant everything because growing up growing up with your brothers and just accomplishing things together it's nothing like it really same for you x 100 percent. i mean these are the guys you were playing on the playground with in elementary school and now you're going to war every single weekend it, it, it's sense different meaning i feel like i think nothing can get better than this and a lot of older guys tell you nothing better than high school football yeah. so yep. i definitely understand that all right, we have about 30 seconds left. You guys were, no secret, two of the most electric players all on Island this year. Not so Suffolk. You train together. Who is faster? Oh, he's definitely got me in strides, but I don't know. I run a, I run a quick 40, but I don't know. He's, he's, I, I saw him this week, and he was fast. Who throws the better long ball? Uh, I, I, will not, I tap out. That's not <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's faster he's, than me. I'll give him that. Yeah. Who's more powerful runner? He's 6'4", 225. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Point. Uh, <laughs> All right. Who's more handsome between Andrew and I? Uh, you don't have to answer. That's it. Show. Hey, guys, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Congratulations on the Long Island Championships. Thanks. And everybody out there, thanks for watching the Sports Rush.